Look at that patch of fur on the back, that square patch. Yeah, they did the, that's... Yeah, they shaved a little, they, yeah. they shaved them and left a little square patch on the back, maybe for the saddle? Maybe, they should, it looks good. Yeah, nice haircut, buddy. <laughs> I'm out at a place called McNee Ranch with uh, Sophie here, and we're just setting up and trying to come up with our compositions. It's a beautiful location. Um, there's a hill behind me that I've seen many times while driving on Highway 1, coming back from surfing or whatever, and I've wanted to paint this area for a while, but never got around to it. So we hiked out here. What would you say? Was it about a half mile or maybe a little more? It was about a half a mile, but we're going to we're going to say it was a mile. <laughs> it was like 3 miles to get out here and it was grueling. Anyway, so uh no, it's about a half mile hike, very pleasant and um so we're just getting set up and going to get started. So I'm using my Anderson easel as usual. I've got a 16 by 20 inch panel. I'll be using liquid as my medium. Uh my usual palette of colors here. And this is the scene that I saw from the road. I like uh this how the trail comes along and then it continues up the hill uh, and there's quite a bit of moisture in the atmosphere so there's a lot of opportunity for some atmospheric perspective oh, okay so you're thinking of doing this tree this like pine yeah. tree okay that will be come kind of my, my focal point i guess okay and then uh, there's lines that lead to it you mean the lines in, in sort of the grass yeah. here yeah. okay and so, then there's that nice, you could push the hills back exactly. in the distance so there. Exactly, so that's going to go, yeah, that would be the, the background out there. All right. So something like that. Sounds good to me. We'll see. We'll yeah. see. <laughs> Okay, so here's the compositional idea and there's a bit of a path here and then it continues up this hill So yeah, here's the path and then up the hill and I like how it's kind of lost and found or it's kind of like broken There's little hints of it, but it's not this continuous path. I always find that to be more interesting um, There's some really nice bright saturated greens on these bushes in the foreground So I'm gonna try to capture that and they also kind of go off into the distance towards the right so I'm going to use this mixture to block in my shadows and this is a mixture of alizarin crimson and ultramarine leaning it towards red uh, and I've added some liquid and odorless mineral spirits. Okay, so did a quick block in here, and I want to keep some of these reds, uh, these reddish tones, since the scene is mostly green. I want to work on these plants first here because I'm afraid I'm going to lose the shadows, and I really like these bright saturated greens on top. So uh, I'm going to reinforce the darks and then uh, work on laying in those greens.
red is the hardest thing for me to see in a landscape. Like, you know, when there's red in a mix, it's easy for me to, you know, like I'll be searching for a color and it's amazing to me how often the color that is eluding me is alizarin crimson. Really? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just for some reason, it's harder for me to judge when I need to add red to a mix. Yeah. It's not as obvious as like something like yellow or blue for some yeah. reason. Those are more obvious. Um, you know, I can make that call a lot easier than I can red. And I'm not sure why that is. You know, I'm learning to say to myself, maybe you want to dip into the alizarin right about now. <laughs> you know, it's like, what, what do you got to lose? The other thing is not everything needs to be perfectly spelled out. Exactly. It's like, it's okay to even leave areas where, you know, the viewer might look and just say, what's going on right there? I mean, that can actually create some kind of interest. Yeah, I could see from a distance. I love the cool, warm relationship between those, uh, you, you know, those greens right there. You simplified the shapes. Yes, at first, to you. at first, they were more like spots. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's better. I took the big brush, like you said. Yeah, take that big brush, brush. when it starts. When things start going the wrong way, the big yeah. brush is the answer. Yeah. yeah. Sophie's uh, painting fell over, but she was able to rescue it. I don't see any. I don't see any dirt. Oh, some up here, a little bit of dirt. I know yeah, the wind picked up. Oh yeah, okay, there's See, a little dirt you there too. You said that was done in purpose. That's right, you gotta add a little dirt or it's not a plein air painting. Yeah, nice job. All right, I just framed up three paintings for a show at Studio Gallery. It's a landscape cityscape show. Uh, this first one is of Pescadero. The Pescadero was 12 by 16. This one's an eight by eight, and it's of downtown in San Francisco. Okay, and this final one is a seven by 16, kind of an unusual size. Uh, this was painted in plein air. I actually started making a video, but it was just so challenging. Um, that I stopped filming. I was pretty convinced that this painting didn't work out, but later when I was looking for paintings for this show, uh, I came across this and actually quite liked it. So I built a frame for it and uh, framed it up. All right, so here's what I finished up with. I spent a lot of time in this area here trying to punch up the light uh, because this was sort of the area that attracted me. I like the fact that the trail has, you know, got all these sort of irregular shapes to it. Tried to focus on making this hill a lot warmer and look for the subtle shifts. Uh, there were certain areas where there were saturated greens and then it was more, you know, like sort of warm greens, almost leaning towards orange. Um, and then, as I mentioned, I wanted to get those bright, saturated greens on the top of these plants here. All right, so lately I've been studying paintings that I feel have stood the test of time. In particular, the paintings of Camille Corot. Uh, he was a French Impressionist. No, he's a French painter who inspired the Impressionists. Uh, but the point is, is that looking at historical paintings, whether it's by Corot or Monet or, or anybody for that matter, uh, what I find is that I end up seeing more paintings around me. I have more compositional ideas. Um, and this painting was a perfect example of that. I was driving by on Highway 1 and I looked over and I saw that trail and I was like, wow, that reminds me of a Corot painting. And it gave me an idea of how to approach that subject. Um, had I not absorbed those Corot paintings, I don't think that I would have, I think I would have driven by and not seen that as a potential idea that was worthy of exploring. Um, so, and the other thing that I think that's helpful in studying timeless paintings is that I feel like you have a better idea for, you know, what is true and timeless in work. It's very easy to you know, get pulled into something that's flashy or trendy or style heavy. 
Um, but a lot of that work, my experience has been, whether it's music or something else, a lot of that stuff is just very of the moment and then it's irrelevant, you know, 10, 15 years from now or even one or two years from now. Um, so as a painter, I am interested in connecting with something that I feel is timeless. And I think you have a better gauge for that in your own work when you've been absorbing works and studying works that have actually done that, stood the test of time. Uh, the other thing that I think is really important that I've noticed lately is getting back from the panel. And I've talked about this before, but I've been doing 16 by 20s. That's kind of my small size at this point. And, uh, but even if you're doing smaller, it's impossible to make you know, good decisions about composition, subtle shifts of color, that sort of thing when you're right up on your panel. So it's so important to get back and make those decisions from like say 10 or 15 feet back. Um, sometimes I'll even walk 30 feet back from a 20 by 16 by 20. Um, and I feel like scaling up the size of my panels has been really helpful as well. I think my paintings are getting better as a result of having more room to work. So 16 by 20 now is my small size and I've just made a bunch of 20 by 25s. Uh, and if you're wanting to scale up, I'd say the thing to do is paint 10 paintings in whatever size it is you want to scale up to and you'll get comfortable with it. Then when I first started with you know 16 by 20s, it felt large and now it feels just normal and it doesn't take me any longer. It's like one and a half, two hours to do a painting. Uh, so, and sometimes that's quicker than when I'm working small and getting fussy with details and stuff. Uh, so anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you're interested in any of the paintings that are going to be in the Studio Gallery show, I've put a link down below so you can contact them. And uh, if you'd like to help support the channel and see extra videos, I've got a Patreon link down below. Other than that, stay creative and I'll see you guys in the next video. Mm -hmm.